There was some news that came out before that the Navy wanted some sort of laser to put on ships. And is this primarily for defense purposes, meaning defending against incoming missiles? Yeah, exactly. So if you're on a ship and you're, uh, you know, uh, our Navy now has placed uh, themselves, you know, offshore, you know, many dangerous places now. And these cruise missiles that are out on the uh, open international arms market uh, are about a million dollars apiece. Mm. And uh, when they come over the horizon, you have about 20 seconds to get out of the way. And, and uh, destroyers don't, don't jump very fast. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, is this something that someday could be used offensively? I suppose that that you know there there are situations that you could use it offensively in close or so forth, but it's primarily a defensive weapon. In the news, it talked about this laser having the ability to cut through twenty feet of steel in a second. That's uh, pretty hard for people to fathom. Is that real? Uh, no, that was a misquote. <laughs> okay, all right, good. Let's clarify that one because that's that's the one that makes people say, "Wow, really?" Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, really, no. Um, it's the electron beam that we produced that will cut through steel that fast. Uh, but the electron beam can't be used uh, as, a, as a weapon, uh, defensively or offensively, uh, because it doesn't propagate through the air. How close is it to actually being a laser that could be mounted on a ship that could actually take something out? It's still a long ways away. It's at least 10 years. Is this the type of thing where somebody could just make a missile that uh, has a mirror on it and maybe deflect it the other way? Is that possible? Uh, not really, because it's, it's sufficiently high power, or it will be, uh, that uh, the, uh, any coatings on, on even reflective surfaces would get burned up very, very quickly. So uh, it, it's quite effective at, at, uh, uh, when it's focused down. At, at blowing away any reflective coating. So it would actually still be quite effective. Uh, and in addition, the laser that we have is tunable, so we can change the wavelength of it. And that means that you never know exactly what wavelength to make it reflective at. Okay, so, uh, you know, media reports sometimes they'll spin things, change it, tweak it, uh, and, and get some of the facts kind of muddled. So uh, could you tell us exactly what you guys were able to accomplish at the lab. This work was on the front end of the machine. So what we do is we make a high-energy electron beam. And the achievement that, that we uh, did uh, this last week was to make a, the, the beginning of that, which we call the injector, uh, much, much brighter. The gun that produces the electrons uh, was previously limited to about 300 kilovolts of operation, and we were able to increase it to 500. And what that means is the electrons come, that are coming off uh, of our electron gun are now much more uh, well-focused, more, uh, we say, collimated. Okay? So uh, we're able to make a much brighter electron beam, and because of that, we can make a much brighter and more efficient laser. Would it be visible light? It's tunable, so it can be visible. What the Navy wants is in the infrared region, uh, just a little bit longer wavelength than visible uh, at 1.6 microns. So that's about three times the, the wavelength of green light that you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they like that wavelength because it propagates through the atmosphere. One of the limitations if they ever wanted to use it as a defensive weapon is that when the, the light goes to the atmosphere, uh, it gets absorbed and scattered. And so you want to choose a wavelength of light which, which best goes through the atmosphere and doesn't get absorbed because uh, not only do you lose the power, but if you heat up the atmosphere, uh, then it distorts the laser beam, just like when you look at the heat coming off a, a road in the summer, right? You see how all, er, everything gets distorted and all wavy looking. Yeah. Um, so that would interfere with their ability to put this light on the missile. And so what you want to do is choose a wavelength where uh, as little of that happens as possible. It's got to be a good color. I mean, look at uh, Star Trek, look at lightsabers. Uh, I uh, think yeah. uh, green might have been a popular color. Uh, yeah, you, you think green would you think green would be good, but we really like to go far into the infrared because there's actually a, uh, when you get down to wavelengths that short, it, it gets scattered around a lot. Also, 
you have an additional problem in that any scattered light that comes back potentially endangers your, your sailors. You can damage people's eyes mm. with bright laser light. Uh, and, of course, at this power level, if you hit them directly, um, it, it, it is going to hurt people, right? But uh, with, with visible light, you even have to worry about scattered light uh, coming back to them, and they'd have to wear special glasses or something like that. I mean, you've, you've probably heard about problems with uh, people with, with lasers blinding pilots and things like that occasionally. Yeah. And so uh, you want to avoid that uh, for the sailors that are on your ship. If you go to the longer wavelengths, then the eye is less sensitive to that. Uh, sounds pretty intense. Uh, obviously, a project that's still under development, but uh, hey, everything had to start somewhere, didn't it? That's right. We're still the scientists here, and uh, at our lab, uh, you know, we uh, we don't put things on ships. Uh, it, that's that's something the Navy will have to do with the aerospace manufacturers. You know, the people, the Northrop Grumman's and the Boeing's and and so forth. But w- but we're the scientists. We kind of lay the groundwork, and then we pass it off. So. We're telling them that uh, our technology is now ready to graduate high school, and it's going to go off to college, uh, and uh, and we'll put it into their hands and, and see what they can do with it. Well, we'll see. You know, maybe Navy ships, and then like Dr. Ebel said, maybe freaking lasers on sharks. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see.